Fresno is a tough place, man. It's not too many people know too much about it. For us, it, it can go two ways. You can either go about your business and take full advantage of the opportunities that you have, or you can get caught up in, I would say, the drugs, the crime, the game banging, and things like that. For me and some of my friends, that we just wanted to really just stay focused and to not fall victim to, to what was going on around us. Kevion and Jalen met in elementary school. I believe they were playing against each other. Then they came together and played together once they got to Central. And when they got together at Central, they were locked in. He was the kid that had a deep voice in fifth, sixth grade and super athletic, eight pack and big arms and legs. We were just like, damn, you just look like a man child out here. And then just, of course, through sports, as we got older, we grew closer together. They used to call themselves the Liddy Boys, and they was just a group of friends who grew up together. And they started as my students, but um, over time, we became family. He was different. Like, he always was like, man, like, I don't want to go to the NFL. Like, I want to start my own thing. Like, I want to have my own clothing brand. Well, we have all of Kevy's stuff in here. This is all about our, this is where we handle all of our No Love brand. No one learns our vision easily is Kevion's clothing line. Being able to have this space means everything to me. It makes me feel um, like I'm closer to him. It gives me the opportunity to feel like I'm able to fulfill his dream. I'm able to like come in here, focus, and handle Kevy business. This is from his central years, Pop Warner years, basketball, football. We have him and my father this there at the doctor's office. Kevy did not miss an appointment with grandpa. So he was always right there with him. <laughs> this is the night that we lost Kevy. He had been out at a fundraiser, like a foundation thing for his best friend's father. I'm texting with him. I'm talking to him like we're making plans. As I look back on his phone records, I see where he was being called a lot, and his friend was calling him. So as he went to where his friend was at, near the uh, Fresno State. It was a party. Kevion gets there, friend leaves him, friend had an altercation with somebody there, and they shot Kevion. He was on the ground for about 25 minutes before the paramedics could get there. One of the boys from his Pop Warner team was actually at that party and applied pressure to one of the gunshots and was screaming and begging for help. They left my baby on the ground. I immediately run to the hospital. When I get up there, they walked me around the back part of the hospital, put me in a little room by myself, and the doctor and a nurse and the social worker came in there and says, Kev didn't make it. I was just kind of ramping up in camp. I get a phone call from my best friend um, at like 4 o'clock in the morning. I kind of automatically just assumed something was wrong. And I was just like, hey, bro, like, what's good? And he was just like, hey, like, Kev is gone. I'm like, what you mean? Like, they, they shot and they killed him. And I was just like, nah, man, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. And he was like, nah, bro, like, he, he, he's gone. Just thinking back to just life, our memories, childhood, I'm thinking, dang, like I go home, I he's, he's never gonna be there again. I think when tragic things happen in your life, you don't really necessarily know at that moment the impact that someone had on you. This is somebody who, you know, I didn't have a, a, a long time with. Like I thought I was gonna meet Kev's kids so they can run around and drive him crazy like he drove his mama crazy, right? And here he was 22 years old and his, his life was gone. I want people to know that Kevion was not just another black boy that was gunned down and was a victim to violence. Kevion was here and he stood for something. He had a very given soul, and he wanted to show that love for, for the community. And he was talking about, yeah, bro, I want to start my LLC. I want to open up this. I want to donate to hospitals. And I'm like, yeah, bro, like, let, me, let me help you out. Like, you got a vision, and let's, let's come up with it together. I went back, and I went to those text messages and looked at all the different things he wanted to do for the community. I'm like, we have, we have the blueprint right here. Like, this is what we're going to do. We can just do it on bigger scales. We're not just coming up with things that sound good, or we're not just making things up. Like, nah, the things that we're doing are the things that he wanted to do. So we're just 
truly trying to execute Kevy's vision. And that's the name of our nonprofit. Jalen calls me one evening and he says, I want to start something in Kev's name. So we start talking about what that looks like and we just start kind of vibing and bouncing ideas off each other. And so from there, like, I just be kind of came almost like the CEO of Kevy's vision. With Kevy's vision, we're able to do things that Kevy did. Kevy would pop up a table with his friends and they went down and fed the homeless. We're doing that. We're doing backpack drives. My favorite is Kevy's vision Winter Wonderland. Mom, dad, kids, everybody gets a gift. Everybody gets something to eat. Everybody gets groceries to take home. It was wonderful. If there was no Jalen Johnson, there would be no Kevy's vision at this level, right? When you think about it, so many young black men die and you have to have somebody who has a platform to keep their name alive. For me, it's just, it's just about continuing to let his soul still walk this earth. I think it, we get co so caught up in the physical body and just, oh, we want to be able to touch and feel somebody. But I know if he was still here, I don't think we be, would be able to impact hundreds and hundreds of kids and hundreds and hundreds of families. I'm just honored that I can be able to honor him and continue to bless families that need it.